Now, I'm sure you're all aware of stories from here in the United States about the days of the gold rush, but have you heard about the great English iron rush? It started in the Teesside district of Yorkshire in 1850. That place became the iron-making capital of the world. And for a hundred years it shaped the lives of thousands of families and provided the material for some of the world's major projects, including our very own Sydney Harbour Bridge. The story of the English iron rush, the people who kept it alive and the survivors of its death, are told in a documentary called A Century in Stone. Its maker is Craig Hornby and Craig's with us now in the studio. Good afternoon. Afternoon. It's an amazing story. It's an unlikely story because uh, so many countries have histories where a uh, history with miners and uh, mm. the, the tough lot of the miner. I mean, yep. we have an expression about life being the pits and the miners mm. experienced that 24-7, didn't they? Yeah, and these fellas didn't disagree when I met them. You know, the, the last of the Iron Men I managed to track down who were all like... Um, I'd grew up around them, was never aware of you know their existence. I played on the mine ruins as a kid, and it wasn't it wasn't household knowledge even within the sort of mining part of Middlesbrough, which is called Eston. Um, and it was I thought it was about time this story was put on the world map because it was the world's biggest iron mine back in Victorian Britain. I mean, it was a big deal that was uh, you know tragically neglected, you know. And as I said, we all talk about the gold rush, but the iron rush for that particular area was huge. I mean, it had the yeah. same effect, didn't it? Drew yeah. people to the area and it was just... Absolutely. It was like a, it was a year after California. It was a year before Ballarat. And then the iron rush kicked in and they found iron ore on the outskirts of uh, Middlesbrough, which is a tiny struggling town. And then uh, it was transformed virtually overnight. In the space of about, I'd say, 15 years, it became the world's iron steel producing capital. And... Told delightfully by your interview technique with some of the old original miners, those Yorkshire accents are amazing. There was one guy there, I had no idea what he had to say, and I wound the tape back to have a listen again. It was just an amazing, that accent is just incredible, isn't really? it? Really? <laughs> Can you understand me? Oh, you're okay. <laughs> but okay. I mean, we've all heard stories about the Yorkshire miners. Even in mm. Australia, we know about the Yorkshire mm. miners. That this is tough, different. Hard breed. Yeah, this is different. This is. Um, Sort of the northeast corner of Yorkshire and southeast corner of Durham, which is which was called Cleveland, land of cliffs, and in the cliffs there was the ironstone. Now this was particular. This this ironstone was a new thing that the other coal mining communities did back much further. All of a sudden, there was the, this ore field was discovered. You see, so this sort of culture within that area evolved. You know, I'm looking around Adelaide. I've seen buildings from like 1860s and 1870s and 80s, and they're all preserved beautifully. I mean, the weather obviously helps because ours are hammered, you know, and tragically we've lost a lot of ours. And we are, we were immigrants, people came from all over Britain and Ireland, from all four corners to create a new people. And this was like an industrial colony in a rural landscape, you know. And some of the stories that the miners were telling about the conditions in which they work, I mean, yeah. knee deep and waist deep in water yeah. and, and you know, having to buy their own powder and having to, and, and building underground, going sort of two and three miles underground yeah. and building yeah. these, having these columns and these little mm. corridors and yeah. horses that spent their entire lives underground yeah. apart from when they were ill. I mean, Absolutely. it was a bizarre kind of life. People are shocked in Britain when I show them that. People are shocked locally when I show it. People from Australia with no link to Britain. I, I, I understand, and it, it's you know, it's a story about struggling, working class struggle, and, and you know, it's uh, it's been going down well. I mean, I mean, every every miner I spoke to, you know, all of them had been injured or had fathers or brothers that were killed. And as you mentioned, the the wages that they were getting were yeah. horrific. The yeah. conditions were horrific. Yeah. Yet it, there was, you know, there was no shortage of people who were prepared to put their lives on the line for fairly ordinary wages to go underground. Absolutely. There was no choice. It was that I ended up on the pan crack. That was the local term for the dole. Back in the 20s and 30s, you know, you went to the pan the parish board of guardians for a handout, you know, and then you had to pay it back when you found a job. And they'd come round your house before you got anything, and they'd go through every drawer, every cupboard, they'd look under your bed, the lot, and these stories are recalled by some of the miners' wives in the film, you know. So it's, um, but it's not all doom and gloom. I mean, there's some, I mean, you know, that kind of an environment, you know, creates a real sort of... Uh, hardcore spirit of resistance and you know and making a life you know digging out a life yourselves and uh, there's some real funny bits in the film told by some of these old guys absolutely and as i mentioned some of the in fact the steel for the sydney harbour bridge came from this very area at this very time yeah um, yeah um which is amazing you know and um some of these old guys i've spoke to were still with us there's a couple left you yeah. know the oldest one is tom who's 98 and Tom was over the moon to think, you know, this film was going to be taken 12,000 miles to the other side of the world and shown, you know. I mean, this story was all but forgotten about until the last, you know, 18 months since the film came out and it's been a massive hit, you know. Yeah, it's a story about a, a mining community. Yeah. 
and people would go ho ho hum. Yeah. But the way that you actually unravel the story and tell yeah. the history, it's uh, it's kind of got blockbuster in it in a funny documentary kind of way, hasn't it? Yeah, I wanted to make a big statement because like Teesside uh, and, and Middlesbrough, the area doesn't really it lives in the kind of shadow of Newcastle in the northeast. It doesn't get its fair crack on TV, and so I wanted to make a big a bigger statement about about the subject, a big tribute to the workers. The biggest thing I could possibly think about was bringing this film to Sydney, for, for one thing, and then taking it right across the country because you know most of the world's railways across the whole of the empire and beyond came out of Middlesbrough back in the 1850s and 60s. You know, it's we've got to we've got to protect our our heritage in a world that become is becoming I think increasingly more uniform. You know, did you have fears that it wouldn't travel? Um, no, because I've had um, I've had so many emails from people saying that they'd, they'd love to see it over here. And it didn't. It didn't take much persuading to get these uh, cinemas booked. So I got, I got, I got Sydney booked, and I got five booked in a night. <laughs> and it was in the early hours. Of one night, I was on the phone, like through the early hours, back home. And by about 4:30 a.m., as the sun was coming up, I had this tour in place. And I'm sure that a lot of the miners who are now dead would be very happy that this story was being told and they weren't forgotten because this is an industry yeah. that was mm, huge. Absolutely. And, and as you show in the documentary, yeah. virtually yeah. all traces of it have disappeared. In fact, I found a relic, a living relic in Queensland. You're kidding. Yeah, a family of a miner who emigrated after the pit closed in 1951. He came out of here and he lives in a, a, little, t a little tiny village in, up in the, in the uh, Glasshouse Mountains. And his family said he's 94 years old, he wants to meet you. So we drove up there and we, we met this guy and interviewed him. So I'm 12,000 miles away with parrots flying around my head interviewing an Eston miner, <laughs> which was very surreal, what can I say? Fantastic. Now, yeah. the, it starts tonight at the Mercury Cinema, yeah. a, a Century in Stone. And Tasman has a question for you, if you want to just pop the headphones on okay. there for you, Craig. Tasman. Craig Hornby, the filmmaker. Tamsin? Tamsin. It is. Good afternoon, Tamsin. Hello. Um... I was just um, listening to your gorgeous accent, Craig, oh. <laughs> just um, remembering the um, the series that's been recently on called Our Feeders and Pets yeah, yeah. on Channel 2, right. how much I enjoyed that, and the original. Yeah. Did you see that? Um, I've saw it, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, absolutely, it was on in yeah. Brittany a year, year or two back, yeah, it's a, it's yeah, a classic, isn't it? it, yeah. You should come and see the film because we, you know, oh, I'd love yeah, to. we haven't got yeah. subtitles for some of these old guys, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. walk out of there going, "Let her all clean with tongue." <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the call, Tams, and Ian has also called. Ian was born in Middlesbrough. Hi, Ian. G'day, Grant. How are you going? Good, thanks. Craig Hornby, the filmmaker of A Century in Stone, is with us as well. Well, I was pretty keen to say good day to uh, to Craig. I've actually got a couple of copies of his uh, video, which I uh, ordered um, uh, through his website. Oh, right. And. Um, I mean, I used to be a pom, you know, and I used to talk exactly like Craig. <laughs> but, but I came here when I was 16. Hey, this is my, my posh phone. voice, mate. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Australian eyes. But, uh, but, yeah, I used to spend my uh, youth wandering around the, uh, the Eston Hills in the old mines. My father worked at, um, at Dorman Long. Right, the, yeah. The place that made the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Right. And, Craig, probably worth mentioning that uh, another uh, Australian English icon was uh, born just down the road. Captain of course Cook. he was, yeah. Absolutely and, uh, was. A couple of miles from this site, uh, mm. where Captain Cook came from. So mm. there's big, strong connections between uh, Australia and, uh, and that part of the world. Yep, no question. Thanks for the call, Ian. Roland has yeah. also called to say hello to Craig Hornby, filmmaker extraordinaire. Hi, Roland. Hello. How are you doing, Roland? All right. Oh, I'm doing well, thanks. It's, uh, it's nice to hear a reasonable accent. For there you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how well you know the area. I came from Teesville, and I worked at Cargo Fleet. Did you? Uh, Dorman's Lack and Beak right driving there. My, my dad worked at Dorman Long, my granddad worked at Cargo Fleet. There you oh, go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. As you say, um, Teesside doesn't get a fair crack. No. It's, uh, it's, either, uh, it's either Newcastle or if you go the other way, it's Leeds or exactly. something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, things have changed back there. Things have changed. I mean, this film's it's sold more than Harry Potter for the last 18 months. It's been big news. We we packed the clubs out. We took it to the big multiplex. We beat Hollywood at the box office for a week. And the story that needs to be told. Thank you for the yeah. call, Roland. Jean also comes from that neck of the woods. She's called 1300 222891. Hi, Jean. Hello. I come from Whitley Bay. Oh, there you go, Jean. Do you know Whitley Bay? Of course, yeah. <laughs> well, we had a, a mine under the house because I lived on the edge of the cliff and a mine used to go under the sea. Oh, all right, yeah. Where is this picture, please? Let me do the business yeah. for you, Jean. It is at the Mercury Cinema and at uh, Morfitt Street in the city. It's opening tonight and uh, Craig is going to be there with questions and answers for those who are interested. Thank you for the call, Gene, and Craig, thank you very much indeed for coming in. I'm sure Brilliant. it's going to go fantastically well. It has already, as you said, done very well in Perth and Sydney. Adelaide, don't let him down. Thanks, Thanks a lot. lot. Cheers, man. It's Brilliant. A, it's very good indeed. It's a fantastic documentary, A Century of Stone. 16 to 5. This is Drive on 891 ABC Adelaide.